Newsmax TV. I'm Kathleen Walter, along with my colleague Ashley Martella. We're joined by Florida Lieutenant Governor and Republican candidate for State Attorney General Jeff Kotkamp. He was elected to the Florida House of Representatives in 2000 and served a total of three terms in the legislature. In 2006, he was tapped by then Republican nominee for Governor Charlie Crist to be his running mate, and the Crist Kotkamp team was elected that November. As Lieutenant Governor, Jeff Sears is Chairman of the Florida Children's Cabinet, Chairman of the Space Florida, Chairman of the Florida Sports Foundation, and oversees the Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles, as well as the Office of Drug Control. Welcome, Governor. It's great to be with you. Welcome to Newsmax TV. The U.S. is struggling to emerge from a major economic crisis. President Obama's answer has been an $800 billion stimulus package and a jobs bill that the Democrats are having a hard time getting a consensus on. In Florida, Governor Christ recently released his proposed state budget, which calls for a 4% increase in spending. What is your take on the current financial situation that we're in, and what is the best way, in your opinion, to create jobs? The best way to create jobs is to let the private sector do it. Let the, the talents and the skills and the energy of Americans uh, bring our economy back. You don't grow and expand the economy by raising taxes. You grow and expand the economy by putting more money into the hands of Americans, uh, by creating incentives for small businesses to grow and prosper and, and hire more people. You know, in the history of mankind, government has never created wealth. Only, wealth will only be created by getting the energy and power of, of the American people and the free market system uh, back, uh, back at work. You've said that Obama wants to take over the country and that we as a nation must never let him do that. Now what specific concerns do you have about this president and how should Americans respond? Well, in my view, it appears that this president doesn't have a whole lot of respect for the foundation of this country or the beginnings of this country. In some ways, it seems like he doesn't really have an appreciation for nation states. Uh, but you look at everything he's done and it seems to be a systematic attack at the, at the very foundation of our country. And that's really what I was getting at. Uh, this country was built uh, on, on the principle that, you know, all men and women are created equal, but also uh, in limited government. You know, government's not the solution, as Ronald Reagan used to say. Government's usually the problem. And in this case, he continues to look for government solutions when we all know, particularly when it comes to the economy, that private sector free market solutions are what's going to work for us. President Obama is trying to revive his health care effort. Florida Attorney General Bill McCollum says Congress has no constitutional right to force people to buy health insurance and that he will sue to stop the proposal if it does indeed become law. Do you support him in this and in office? Would you do the same? I would already have the complaint drafted. It's clearly a violation of the Tenth Amendment, which says uh, specifically, you know, the, go the federal government has certain powers de designated in the Constitution. Everything else uh, is reverted back to the states and to the people. Uh, and there is, if the federal government can force you to buy health insurance, then it can force you to do anything. And, you know, I, I've, we've seen the Commerce Clause uh, expand way beyond its in original intent. Uh, this goes way beyond that. And I think uh, that all the attorney generals around the country need to draw a line in the sand here. Uh, this really is an important time in our, our country's uh, history and we need to draw the line and say the states exist for a purpose. Obama has just announced plans to end the Constellation program or the moon mission, drop it from the budget. Now of course Florida's Kennedy Space Center located at Cape Canaveral is a big part of the state. Is this a big mistake on his part do you think? It, does this diminish America's role as a leader in the space program? It's a huge mistake. It's obviously it will have an immediate impact on the workforce in the Space Coast here in Florida, which is the best workforce in space, uh, aerospace in the world. But more important than that, you know, when you go back to the moon and then we were going to go to Mars in the Constellation program, that's not just about the national pride of being able to do that. That puts a firm stake in the ground that says that your country is going to be the leader in the innovation economy. It says that your country, you know, we have 3,000 products that we all use every day developed as part of the space program originally. So when you are the leader in space, you lead in innovation and the creation of technology, which means new product lines, more jobs, high-wage, high-tech jobs. So it's a monumental mistake to, for the president to say, we're going to take a backseat. We'll let China or Russia 
uh, take, take the lead on this uh, because uh, this really is in this borderless knowledge-based uh, innovation economy something we should be doing. Controlling space is critical to our national security. What kind of grade do you give President Obama for how he's handled national security issues such as Iran and the terrorist threat? Well, you look at the history of, of measuring military superiority. It was first who had the best army then who had the best Navy, then who had the best Air Force. Now it's who controls space. So if we take a back seat, he is significantly putting our national defense in jeopardy. And so D minus maybe. Uh, fortunately, he has had uh, some folks in the military that have led him the right way occasionally. But again, I don't get the sense that this president understands you know, that, that we are the leader of the free world and it's, it's our strength as a country that creates stability all over the world. British business leaders predict that there's an oil crunch, uh, energy crunch coming in 2015 that'll make even the current economic uh, crisis seem small by comparison. Now, there's been a lot of controversy over drilling off Florida's coast. How do you feel about that? Should we drill here? Well, we should certainly diversify our, our portfolio with a national goal of being energy independent. So that means you've got to look at drilling not only for oil, but for natural gas. I mean, I, I frankly don't understand why we not, we're not already drilling for natural gas. That takes away the, the whole concern about uh, tanker leaks and the rest. We certainly need to be more serious about solar, but I think in a more practical way. Uh, why don't we, at the Sunshine State, have every household in Florida with a solar water heater. That would, that would eliminate our consumption by 17 percent and it's, it's an affordable way to do it. But certainly uh, drilling with this goal, I mean you got to have this goal to be energy independent, has to be something we should be very serious about. Florida's economy is largely dependent on the agriculture and tourism industries and we know that the tourism industry as a whole is taking um, a worse slide now than it did after September 11th. Former Governor Bush made luring biotech companies to Florida a priority. Should the Sunshine State be doing more to lure businesses and create a more diverse economic base? really need to continue this transformation in the economy of Florida that we're seeing. And while we have 84 million visitors, obviously tourism will continue to be a part of our economy, as will agriculture. But for the long term in Florida, biotech and life sciences, aerospace, alternative energy, renewable energy, and digital technology, these are all areas where you bring high tech, uh, high wage jobs to your state. And when you do that, then you, you increase the standard of living. You, then you have plenty of revenue for roads and schools and all the other things. But that really is uh, the future of Florida. You've worked very closely with Governor Charlie Crist as his lieutenant governor. What accomplishments are you most proud of as a team? And have you accomplished everything you set out to do? Well, you never accomplish everything. Uh, but the thing that we really focused on when we took office was cutting property taxes. Uh, we have uh, cut property taxes uh, more uh, than they've ever been cut in the history of Florida. I'm very proud of that. And then we've been faced, obviously, with, with the, uh, the biggest economic challenge from a budget standpoint in our lifetime. And we've reduced the budget uh, by nearly $8 billion uh, over the first three years and done what everybody uh, does when they sit around their kitchen table, what my folks did when I was growing up. You know, they go through the bills, they figure out how much money they have, and they make ends meet. Uh, and that's what we've tried to do in state government is, is to reduce spending, uh, be a w good stewards of the people's money. Uh, that's what the, they expect of us. Governor Christ is running in the Republican Senate primary in hopes of winning the seat vacated by Mel Martinez. Are you surprised by the challenge presented by his opponent, Marco Rubio? Well, not, not at all uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, you have to look at the, the political climate, the economic climate. Uh, this is a time when, when incumbents uh, are being viewed very close scrutiny by the voters. But Marco Rubio is also a very talented guy. I mean, I was uh, in the legislature with him. I was going to be his majority leader uh, when the governor picked me to be his running mate. So uh, two uh, very dynamic people. Uh, and it's going to be a very fun race to watch because they're both very talented, very articulate, uh, and have their strengths and weaknesses. If elected Florida's attorney general, what would your priorities be? Job one has to be uh, pill mills. Uh, the, this, this proliferation of pain clinics, uh, we have six people that die a day in Florida from the overdose and abuse of prescription drugs. Uh, pill mills uh, in South Florida uh, in particular where where we're seeing uh, waiting rooms with 75 people, cash only businesses with an armed guard at the front door and these guys are taking trash bags out at the end of the day with two or three hundred thousand dollars a day 
in cash. And this breeds even worse crime. I would certainly continue the work with cyber crime that uh, Attorney General McCollum has done such great work on to protect our children from online predators, uh, work to break up the gangs that have become the organized uh, crime of our time. In the end, uh, being Attorney General is about providing for the safety uh, and security of the citizens of Florida, and that would be uh, my priority. Florida Lieutenant Governor and Attorney General Candidate Jeff Kotkamp, thank you so much for your time. It's my pleasure. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV. Sarah Palin's new book, Going Rogue in American Life, will be released on November 17th. You can be among the first to get your copy. Check out our incredible free offer for Sarah's new book. Just go to Newsmax.com and click on the top banner for this great offer. Act today.